The Schrodinger equation helped our understanding of electrons. Rather than pinpointing an exact location, the equation allows us to map out the electron densities as well as determine its quantized energy level. And solving these electron densities are how we get atomic orbitals, which are 3D regions of space where electrons are most likely to be found. Each orbital can host up to two electrons, and these orbitals only exist if they are occupied by electrons. They are energetically favorable locations for electrons, so finding an electron outside these orbitals is highly improbable due to electron energy constraints, but it's not impossible. The behavior of electrons in these orbitals is described by four quantum numbers. The principal quantum number n is any positive integer, so for example, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. And it indicates the electron's energy level relating to its distance from the nucleus. This concept was initially introduced in the Bohr model, so these distances represent principal quantum numbers. The next is the angular momentum quantum number, or L, ranging from 0 to n minus 1, and it determines the orbital shape. An L value of 0 describes the s orbitals, 1 for p orbitals, 2 for d orbitals, and 3 for f orbitals, each with different shapes and configurations. So if n was 2, you could have 0 or 1, but not 2 or higher, because remember, it's n minus 1. The magnetic quantum number, m sub l, which can be any integer between negative l or positive l, specifies the orbital's orientation. This number relates to the possible configurations of each orbital shape. For example, s orbitals where l equals 0 only have one configuration, so m sub l equals 0, whereas p orbitals where l equals 1 have three configurations, where m sub l can equal negative 1, 0, or 1, and so forth. Lastly, the spin quantum number m sub s which is either positive half or negative half, represents the electron's spin direction. This aligns with the Pauli exclusion principle, ensuring no two electrons in an atom have the same set of quantum numbers. Now, let's look at some quantum numbers. For n equals 1, the simplest level, we encounter the 1s orbital. Here, l equals 0, and m sub l is also zero, indicating it's a spherical orbital with room for two electrons of opposite spins. It's the lowest energy orbital, making it the first to be filled. Moving up to n equals two, we have two types of orbitals. The 2s where l equals zero and 2p where l equals one. The 2s orbital similar to the 1s orbital has a spherical shape, but the 2p orbitals are more complex with m sub l values of negative 1, 0, and 1, each capable of hosting two electrons. At the n equals 3 level, things expand further. We see the 3s orbitals where l equals 0 and the 3p orbitals where l equals 1 with three possible configurations. Here, the orbitals increase in size and energy, but we also encounter the 3d orbitals, where l equals 2, which represents five unique configurations, reflecting more ways electrons can be arranged. For n equals 4, the orbitals look even weirder. Electrons can occupy the 4s, 4p with three configurations, 4d with five configurations, configurations, and finally for f orbitals, which have seven configurations. The sequence in which these orbitals are filled is guided by the Aufbau principle, a topic I'll delve into in the next video. So in essence, these four quantum numbers form a framework for understanding the states of electrons in all atoms.
This understanding is important in chemistry as it helps predict how electrons change states and interact, which in turn influences molecular bonding and properties. So for instance, we can predict that two hydrogen atoms will bond due to the compatible orbital symmetries and energy levels. And compatibility of orbital symmetries and energies very simplistically describes much of how chemistry actually works and happens. But in reality, large molecular structures, orbital distortions and system energies have to be considered, which is why it's not just as easy as saying these symmetries are compatible, therefore these molecules will bond. Nonetheless, it provides an invaluable foundation for understanding atomic and molecular interactions in chemistry. So that's about it. Thank you for watching. Until next time.